So this session, what sessions have you guys been to so far? Showbox. Okay. So this session, I want you guys to feel free to ask questions at any time. But what I'm going to go over is what we do with our show calves at home and what we do with them when we get to the show. So if you guys want to take notes, it's kind of going to be a little bit of a timeline of, of how we raise and take care of our show animals. Kelly, can I stop you for a second? Yep. Because I know who you are. Oh, yes. Sorry. I'm Kelly Lee, and I work here at Oakfield Corners Dairy. <clears throat> So the first thing I want to talk about is kind of what we do for vaccinations and getting calves um, ready from when they're born to when they're about six months old. So how many of you guys help with um, the calves being born at your farm? Right, so um, at birth, what we do here is we give our calves, um, we give them a dose of nasal gin. So do you guys, do you guys ever use this? Yep, these little ones. Well, this, so this is Enforced, but there's another brand, Nasal Gin. So something, an internasal that we put in their nose and helps um, protect them against bovine rhinotracheitis or pneumonia and, and things like that. So we give the Nasal Gin or Enforced. And then um, we don't really give our calves too much else until they're, they are weaned. So do you guys do anything else um, in between birth and weaning? You dehorn them. All right. So that, what kind of, um, how do you, how do, you do dehorn at your farm? You do the paste? Yeah. Yep. Yeah? Okay. How do you guys do it? burn them okay so dehorn so you can paste do paste do you do that when they're about a day old yeah. yep so that's what we do too so we um, put the we clip that spot right on the top of their heads and put the paste on and it's a good idea to check and make sure that it hasn't rubbed off or that it hasn't gotten anywhere else on them <coughs> because it can burn them so then and then the other way is burning so we burn them too here so if you're going to burn them, it's a good idea to give them some lidocaine and probably help have your vet or your parents help you with this. Dehorning is not a one-man job. What? They get mad. They get mad. Yeah, that's a, dehorning is my least favorite job on the farm. Anybody else's? Yes, especially if we're burning them. So then at 14 weeks, we give our calves um, Bova Shield. And Bova Shield protects against a couple different diseases. So again, bovine rhinotracheitis, so some respiratory things, um, and then as well as lepto too. So we give Bova Shield, and then we also give Ultrabac or um, Alpha 7 to pr uh, protect against Clostridia. So um, we put Corid in the calves' water to protect against coccidiosis because sometimes when they move, their immune system gets down and they pick up that um, coccidiosis bug and that kind of knocks them back a couple days. So we like to put Corid in their water to prevent that and then um, if it's bad, we also treat coccidiosis with Corid um, in a larger dose. Um, if you guys, did anyone buy a calf today? No? That's all right. Neither did I. No. Um, so if you guys are, did anyone buy a calf this spring or will you buy a calf this summer? You bought a calf this spring. Did you buy it from a sale or another farmer? Uh, at a sale. So it's a good idea when you get a calf home from a sale to um, put some poron dewormer on them. So we use uh, Ultra Boss and we also use Epronex. So um, those are just two brands that um, we use. And the poron kind of 
protects them from lice or mites or anything they might have picked up maybe at another farm or at the sale or at the fairgrounds. So we like to use a pour on and then we also pour on a couple weeks before the show to prevent them getting straw mites at the show if we can help it. So um, pour on after they get home from a sale and then before a show. So then after this kind of initial phase to six months old, we don't really give them any too much more um, vaccines, but we do give the Enforce before they go to a show. Does anyone else do that? Yep. What other vaccines do you guys um, do for show or, or health testing before you go to the fair? Does anybody know? Just call the vet and he just takes care of it. That's a good vet. So one thing you need, how many of you guys live in New York? How many Pennsylvania? Okay. Anywhere else? Nope. Okay. So in New York, you need BVD, a negative BVD test, um, a rabies vaccine, Um, does anyone know anything else? You also need a uh, triangle 10 or something um, to protect against shipping fever. And then we give the Enforce again. And then um, in Pennsylvania, do you guys need anything extra do you know of? No? I think in Pennsylvania you need um, TB too. Is that right? Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. And then about how soon should you do your health testing? Two months before, before. yep. And then if you're late like me, like I usually am, how, um, up until when can you get your animals health tested, do you know? So no later than two weeks before the show sh can you get your health testing done. Okay, so does anyone have any questions about kind of the protocol bef from here, from birth to like post weaning and um, calf selection to um, health testing, things like that? Questions? Nope. Oh, do you have a question? Um, no. No. At my farm, like, for in between birth and weaning, we have like tag. Oh, yep. That's a good one. So we usually do tagging kind of right in here, too. And it's a good time to, what else Re related to the tags? Tattoo. Tattoo. Something else? The RFID tags, yep. So we actually here, we put our RFID tags in right when they're born, but um, yeah. you do too, yep. Um, anything else? Register them, yes. Register. Sometimes, what can you, do you guys, how do you um, do your ID for your registration papers? Anyone? Like when you go to the show and they check your paper to see if it's the right animal, do you know what you can do? Yep, you can go online and register, yep. Do you know what kind of IDs are acceptable for registration papers? <coughs> anyone? Pictures? Does anyone put, send their pictures in of their calves? Yeah, how many people picture? Okay, how many people ear tags for your IDs? Yep, okay. Register, take a picture. All right, so any questions about this? No? Okay. 
so the next thing I want to talk about is what we do when we go to the show. So what is kind of the first thing you do when you get to the show? Yes. Well, bed up the pack. Thank you. You're the first person to say bed up the pack first. So bed pack, um, display, what else before your cows get there? Yep. Yep. Uh, set up the water. Waters. Get your supplies there. Supplies. So bed pack, supplies, water, um, display. Do you guys usually take a display to the fair? Yep. Signs. Yep. What do you guys have? Fans. Signs, fans. Thank you. Okay, so then, oh, did you ask one more thing? The food. The food, yep. Human or cow? Or both? <laughs> food and feed. All right, so then what do you do when you get to the show? Wash. Then you wash. What did you have? W wash, okay. Can you guys think of anything right, right before washing? Take them, off the trailer. Take them <laughs> off the trailer. And do they usually make you check your health charts before you get off the trailer? Yep. So it's usually a good idea to have your health charts and your cows in the same truck and trailer. Make sure your health charts aren't with your mom or at the farm. That would be very bad if they're at the farm. So health charts and unload. Okay, bed pack, health charts, wash, and then when we're done wash, oh, feed hay. Feed hay. So the, before our animals get to the show, we usually feed hay up here um, and have it all ready. But then when we're done washing, we feed hay too. While we're on this subject, so when we feed hay the show, do you guys bring big squares, round bales, small squares, a little bit of everything? So what I like to do when I'm feeding hay is take a little chunk about the size. You guys know how big the little square bales are, right? So I like to split one chunk in between two animals and then feed about that same size if you're feeding from a big bale or something like, or a round bale. And then if you feed little amounts of hay at a time, then your animals are always kind of hungry and always wanting more hay as opposed to just taking a big armful or big pile of hay and setting it up there and letting them hang out for the day. If you're always feeding hay and always keeping them hungry, then they don't get bored with the hay. And in the morning when you're cleaning out your packs, you don't have a ton of hay left over that you have to pitch out. So that's why I like to feed a little bit of hay at a time. Does that make sense? Okay, so a little bit at a time. And then that first day we're there, I like to let the animals rest for, for most of the day or start clipping. So um, about how long are your guys' county fairs or shows? A week. A week? Uh, three or four days. Three or four days, yep. So sometimes if you only have three or four days, it's a good idea to clip your animals before you leave for the fair and then you kind of have that time at the fair to touch up your clipping and feed hay and let your animals rest and get adjusted to the um, fairgrounds and to the pr show program. So um, that first day we like to let them rest and then that second day you're at the fair your heifers kind of know what's going on and you guys have a plan. So what we, we have a saying, it, it's called, it goes feed, water, wash. So we get to the show at about four in the morning, if we're at a big show, but sometimes at a smaller show, maybe five. Do you guys, what time do you guys get to the barn? Uh, four. Four. Six. Six. 
Six, three? Your parents must be slave drivers. <laughs> so, uh, um, so we get there at um, usually between four and five, and we feed everything. And they'll talk a little bit more about feeding upstairs. So we feed, and then we water. Do any of you guys show milk cows sometimes? Yeah? Okay, so we usually um, milk our cows while, we're, while they're eating, so they're happy. Feed, milk, water, and um, I want to talk about watering a little bit because I think it's a really important part of having happy heifers, and it can determine how well your show goes if your heifers drink. Right? Have you guys ever gone to the show and had your animals not drink and then they get sick and unhappy and stuff like that? So, um, when we water at the show, we have a hose or we have um, what's called a water line. So it's a hose with a couple different hoses on it and we're able to water the animals individually. And why we like watering them individually is so that they can, so we know how much they drank and if they drank really well or if they need to be drinking better throughout the week. How many of you guys have, um, do you know if you have well water at your farm? Yeah? yeah? So, and then most fairgrounds have city water, right? So sometimes your heifers don't drink when you get to the show. Has that ever happened? Yeah? <laughs> so, what, um, one thing you can do is you can put a water filter on your hose when you get to the show and use that um, filtered water, but sometimes the water still smells chlorinated, right? It still smells a little bit funny and sometimes the heifers still don't want to drink it even if there is a filter on it. So what we do, one thing you can do is dump a can of soda in there and it takes away that smell of the, the different kind of water. Have you ever heard of that? No? So you can dump a soda or a Gatorade or something like that and if your heifers aren't drinking or and aren't about that different water, you can dump something in there. Do you ever do that? No, it doesn't have to be a, a specific type of soda. We usually use like a, a dark soda like Pepsi or Dr. Pepper or Coke or something like that, but I'm pretty sure as long as you have something that takes that smell and that funny taste away. So, water, you can add a, a soda or something like that. And usually if you do that the first day, by the second day, they've kind of adjusted a little bit better. So they, um, that, does, that smell doesn't bother them, but you can keep doing it as long as you need to at the show. So what we do when we water is bigger heifers can have um, almost as much as they want. So will, did you guys already go to the show box? Yep. So did Carly have um, kind of a black tub that was about this big and about this deep? So what I do is I fill that, I fill that full and then take it up to a, um, the bigger heifers and let them drink that. And I have a hose with me and I refill it as they're drinking it. So I kind of let them have um, two or three pans full of water. And then with the calves, I let them have about um, one and a half pans of water. And then we water in the morning and at night. And a good way to kind of teach your animals how to, how to drink on that schedule is to practice at home. So one thing that um, we sometimes do is tie animals up and have kind of a pretend show at home and practice watering them and, and feeding them hay and things like that so they know kind of what they're supposed to do when they get to the show. Does that make sense? And then with cows, they can have free choice water. Do you guys do that? Do you have like water tubs or something like that? So, so cows, free choice. And then the heifers, we like to keep track of how much they're drinking. And then on show day, you can, um, before the show, you can give them, they can have as much as they want, and then they have a big fill. Right? Right. Okay. So back to the schedule. So we feed and we water, which I think is very important, and then we wash again in the morning. Wash in bed. How many of you guys like to wash? 
wash. How many of you guys like to do the pack in the barn? Hmm. Makes me itchy. I like washing. How many of you guys like to lead to the wash rack? Yeah, that's my favorite job ever. So wash, bed, and exercise. So, um, so that's kind of your first day you should, or so your second day, you've, your animals have settled in, you've done your morning chores, and then your heifers lay down for an hour or so, and then when they get up, that's a good time to start clipping or maybe practice with your animals and things like that. And what? Catch the poo. Catch the poo, <laughs> stuff like that, right. So, um, so then the rest of the day should be feeding hay and letting your animals rest and clipping. And then the next day should be um, more clipping, more feeding hay. And then the day before the show, it's a good idea to have all your clipping done and just let your animals eat and rest so that they're not cranky when they're in the ring. You guys agree? Yes. Yes. I agree. You agree? No cranky animals in the ring, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, all right. So let's see. What else? Do you guys have any questions? Nope. All done. So the one other thing I wanted to talk about is how many of you guys get silly questions when you're at the fair? Everybody? Okay, so the skinny cow question, that's a good way to explain to people about dairy cows and how dairy cows make milk and they use their energy to, they use all their feed that they're eating to put their energy into making milk, whereas the beef cows they eat their feed and they put their energy into making those steaks and those hamburgers. So that's so. See how instead of just saying, "Well, she's skinny because she's a dairy cow," kind of try to um, use put put on a smile and tell them, kind of explain why she's skinny and talk about. Well, you can see my collarbones and you can see my shoulders and and that's just kind of how we see it on a cow. And then um, the chocolate milk question, you can talk about the different breeds of cows and um, where cows came from and things like that, why you maybe have a jersey instead of a Holstein or things like that. So try to use those, take those questions and, and turn them into um, some information for the public. Do you have a question? Yep. So sometimes, sometimes um, when your cows are pregnant, you can't even tell, right? Just by looking at them. So that's another thing you can explain. When cows are pregnant, they don't have a big stomach like humans do. Sometimes when they're nine months pregnant, you can see. But really, cows just have really big stomachs because they eat because um, we're feeding them a lot of feed to keep them happy and they drink almost a bathtub full of water a day and things like that. So be able to tell people a little bit about your cows and how much work that you put into getting to the fair and about your farms and kind of why you do what you do and be patient with people and be positive, okay? So that's kind of what